If you're a programmer and you get sick and tired of typing in the same old nonsense over and over again, then this is a must watch video. Today, I'm going to take the five most popular text replacement tools and see which is the best one to help us program. Now, in order for me to help you pick the best tool possible, my first recommendation is for you to actually consider what type of text replacement you need this tool to do. Now, for me personally, there's three things I'm looking for in a tool. Right, so my first requirement is that I need a tool that can handle scripts, which might be thousands of characters long. Now, my second requirement is around price. So yes, I am a professional software developer. However, I can't afford to personally pay for every single bit of productivity software that I use. So I need something that's going to come within my budget, preferably free. And the final consideration is around syncing the rules. Now, if you're anything like me, you've got a work laptop, you might have a desktop, you might have a laptop for the lounge, you might have a Mac to do different stuff on. And I don't want to have to set up the same rules over and over again. So I want an easy way to be able to share all my rules between all my different devices. The first tool that we're going to look at is called Auto Hotkey. Now this tool was released in 2003, so it's been around for ages. And this is the tool that I was most excited to try out. Now the reason for this is that it comes with its own scripting language. This means that as well as doing text replacement, you can also do fancy things like launch applications and write advanced macros. Okay, so it's time to review this tool. Now, the first thing to say is that if you want to try it out yourself, you can download it at autohotkey.com. Now, the things you need to know about this tool are first, it's open source. This means it's completely free and you won't need to pay anything. Now, the second thing is that this is a desktop tool meaning you can do your find and replace in any application that you use. And the final thing, which I think you should be aware of, is that this is a Windows only tool. So if you need to do find and replace in a Mac, then you will need to look at alternatives. Now, when it comes to installation, actually using the tool, also Hotkey definitely has the steepest learning curve out of all the tools that I'm reviewing today. Now, the reason for this is that it has its own scripting language. Now, this scripting language is pretty powerful. It allows you to do a bunch of different stuff. And if you're just looking for simple text replacement, then this is probably overkill. Now, if auto hotkey sounds interesting to you, one thing I think is worth mentioning is there's actually two different versions and there's a slight scripting difference between the two. Now, this means that when you're trying to figure out how to create your own custom scripts and you go online to do some research, many times you're going to find V1 versions of that script and then you're going to have to try and manually change it to v2. Now, at this point, definitely isn't a deal breaker by any means. However, you do have to ask yourself the question, if you're looking at this tool to save time and you need to invest a bunch of time in learning this new scripting language, will you actually save any time if all you need to do is just do some simple find and replace? Scripting language aside, after you've installed Auto Hotkey, you're going to get access to this pretty simplistic dashboard. Now, sadly, you can't do too much from this dashboard. So you can basically create a new file. You can convert that file into an exe and you've got access to some help files. And that's pretty much it. Now, for me personally, this minimal dashboard and minimal options really did spoil my enjoyment of using this tool. And there are two big areas where I was really disappointed that there wasn't much settings. So the first one is there's no easy way for you to set your scripts to run automatically when Windows starts. So what this means is that you're going to create a script using this dialog. This script's going to get created within your user folder. So user, user, documents, auto hotkey. Then you're going to have to right click on your script. You're going to have to create a shortcut for it. You're then going to have to cut your shortcuts. You're going to go to search, go to run. We're then going to do shell colon startup, and then we're going to paste it here. Now you're going to have to do this for every single script that you run. And let's say that you want to run auto hotkey on five or six different machines. You're going to have to do this at multiple times. Now, the second quirk that I found a little bit annoying was around debugging. Now, this quirk is definitely more of a minor annoyance rather than a showstopper, but it's probably worth mentioning. Now, the way that auto hotkey works is that once you've got a script up and running, it's going to get its own taskbar icon. Now, when it comes to development, if you want to test things and change your scripts, you're going to have to right click on the taskbar icon and click on edit script. Now, imagine that you have five different scripts running 
and you want to do some debugging, it's very difficult to know which taskbar icon maps to the script that you're working on. Now, yep, I am aware I am being super critical here, but what happened to me semi-regularly is that in my haste to get something up and running, I'd accidentally reload the wrong script, then I'd be confused as to why my latest changes aren't working, and basically it just caused me extra time of debugging. Now, I think if AutoHotKey had a better way of reloading scripts entirely, then I wouldn't have had to waste that time, and I did find it a little bit frustrating. Now, set up aside, I guess the next thing to consider are the rules of actually how do we do our text replacements. And this is done inside of those AHK files. You are now looking at my emoji script. So this is a text replacement for aliases to emojis. And I think on first glance, we can all agree this isn't the most easiest syntax to understand because it's very easy to get typos in here if you put things wrong. So basically the makeup of this text replacement is that we're doing this star and then we're saying replace this alias, which is at right, with this emoji here. Now granted this script only uses a tiny little bit of what the underlining scripting language can do. However, if you're just looking for find and replace, then this is basically everything you need. Now, one consideration with the limits of using a bar like this is that what happens if you need to do find and replace on a script, which is multiple lines long or thousands of characters, because you're not gonna be able to do a simple one file mapping. Now, there is a workaround to do this by using the shell, and you can learn more about it in the related tutorial, which you can find in the description. However, it's just something to keep in mind. The next tool that I'd like to tell you about is called Magical. Now, this is a Chrome only extension. And if this sounds interesting to you, then you can install it on your own PC by going to getmagical.com. Now, after you install Magical, you're going to get this taskbar icon and opening it up is going to give you access to the Magical UI. Now, in order to create a brand new rule, there's this big blue button at the bottom. Now we have a few different ways of creating rules so we can access our copy and paste history. We've even got the ability to use a template library. So you can see on the magical homepage here, we've got some integrations, five powerful sales qualification templates. Now I'll probably say there isn't that much stuff here for development. However, it's worth going through. If you just want to create a brand new rule, you basically click on the button, give your rule an alias. So this is a thing which is going to trigger the rule later on. And then within the text editor below, you can add in your text replacement. Now, in terms of kind of the editor, you've got access to an AI assistant. So you can ask AI to help you write your template. You've got a bunch of different formatting options as you'd expect. We've got insert emojis. We've also got abilities to insert dates. And there's also some macro stuff so I can insert some personal information about myself. So just in terms of the text replacement, I think everything's solid. However, they are two big concerns that I have with Magical. Now, the first one is that it is Chrome only. This means that, yep, it's going to be easy to sync settings between PC and Mac. However, if I want to do stuff in Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, then this isn't going to cut the mustard. And I'm also going to need another tool. Now, the other issue I have is around pricing. Now, you do get a free tier with Magical. However, they cap it to a lifetime amount of replacements. So if you get to 3,500 replacements, the tool's going to stop working and then you're going to need to upgrade. And this really is my big concern with Magical because why invest a bunch of time using it, creating all the rules only in three months time for you to have to ditch it and move on to a different tool. Right, now I have to admit, I'd never heard of this next tool until I started doing this review. Now, while I was doing my research, I saw that this tool had a bunch of downloads. It got some good feedback. So let's see if it's any good or not. So the next tool is called Espanso, and you can download it from espanso.org. Now, the important things you need to know about this tool is number one, it's a desktop tool. This means you can do your replacement in a browser and your IDE. The second important thing is that it's free to open source. And the third important thing is that it has a client for Windows, but it also has a client for Mac and Linux. So this means you can do your replacement on any platform. Now, when it came to installation, I'm happy to report that things were really easy. You run an EXE and during the setup process, you're also asked if you want to have your scripts run on startup. So this means you don't have to do that extra configuration faff that you had to do with AutoHotKey. Now, after you've got Espanso running, the tool itself is pretty bare bones. You'll basically get this icon in your taskbar 
and if you click on it you don't really have that many options now the thing i preferred here is that we can do reload config and this is going to reload all your scripts so debugging was much easier with the spanso compared to auto hotkey now i guess one negative here is actually understanding how to write scripts so basically espanso will install all your scripts within your user roaming profile so just in case that was a little bit too fast for you i'm inside my windows user app data roaming espanso and in here you're going to find two folders config and match and the rules we want to add are in match now you can see within here we've got base yaml and the way that we add rules within espanso is via yaml now for me personally i think this is a much easier syntax to understand compared to the scripting language of auto hotkey and as you can see we've got a matches at the top and then we do a trigger and a replace now because it is yaml you do need to worry about indentation spacing However, for me personally, I find it much easier to understand the contents of a file and spot mistakes using this syntax. Now, personally, I don't have any qualms about using YAML to define rules. However, because of this syntax, we are still left with a problem. And that is, how do we deal with large scripts? Because it'd be impossible to paste a large script into a single replace property. Now, luckily, Expanso does have the option of using the shell. So I have come up with an alternative, which I'll quickly show you how I paste in large scripts. So to solve this script dilemma, what we can do is add our scripts as text files inside of my Dropbox. Then what I did within my rules is basically created a rule that made use of the shell. So down the bottom here, you can see we've got this trigger. So this trigger is saying that when I type in at JSON one, we're going to replace the output here. And then what we're going to do is use the shell we're going to use PowerShell and then we're going to use this PowerShell command. So this basically means when I type at JSON one, then this command is going to get triggered. So I guess the takeaway here is that if you need to do more advanced replacements, then because Expanso allows you to access the shell, you can. Now in a perfect world, I would prefer Espanso to be able to do it out of the box for me because the issue with my workaround is that if I wanted to trigger that command on PC or Mac, then it's not going to work because it's using PowerShell. So the workaround there would be to create two different rules, but you know, that's not the end of the world, is it? So, so far Espanso has ticked all the boxes I was looking for. However, there's also an additional extra cherry on the cake that's worth talking about. So Espanso also has a package library. And in the package library, we have about 100 different scripts that you can install. There's a bunch of stuff here, scripts around emojis, get IP addresses, medical stuff, travel stuff, and installing a script is super simple. So you basically click on the script you want to work with, you type in this command, and off Espanso goes. And because of this extra icing on the cake, Espanso gets a massive thumbs up from me. So the next tool we're looking at is called Blaze. And if you want to install it yourself, you can go to blaze.today. Now, as you can see, Blaze is a Chrome extension. It also has a Windows client and it also has a Mac client, OS client as well. Now for today's video, we're just gonna focus on the Chrome extension. And after installing it within your toolbox, you can get access to this icon and clicking on it is gonna pop open the dashboard. Now, the difference with Blaze is that if you try and do something, you're going to have to edit your snippets within their dashboard. And clicking on this is going to open up the Blaze website. Now, just in terms of the UI and the functionality, I was really impressed with Blaze. So in order to create a brand new rule, you can see that we put our shortcut here and then we put the text we want to replace down the bottom. Now, as you can see, we've got a bunch of classic text manipulation stuff. So all the stuff you'd expect to see in any text editor, so your bold, your italics, all that kind of good stuff. But I think the bits where Blaze really comes into its own is on the right hand side here. So just like Auto Hotkey had a scripting language, Blaze also gives you access to a bunch of really useful macros. So you can see we've got macros to do things with the date, clipboard, cursor, there's stuff to work with forms, there's stuff so you can interact with the keyboard and mouse, so you can do autopilot scripts, We've got dynamic logic, so you can add if elf statements. There's also options to do web scraping using the data blaze. And there's a bunch of other stuff. Far too much for me to go over in this one video. Now, there's more good news if you're liking the look of blaze so far. And that is it comes with a free tier. And there's no stupid lifetime limits here. 
So if you can use all the functionality in Blaze today, you don't need to worry about paying for anything later on if you don't want to. Now, sadly for me, one of the limits with the free tier comes around the script size. Now you can see here, I've pasted in one of the scripts I need to work with. My script is bigger than 2,500 characters. And for me, I can only use this tool if I pay for Text Blaze Pro. So the good news here is that the Pro version isn't going to break the bank, only three bucks a month. So about $30 a year and $7 for business. However, this is a cost I don't really want to pay. Now, pricing aside, before we look at our final tool, I think another thing which is definitely worth pointing out is that Blaze has its own gallery. So in here, you can find a bunch of different scripts that you can easily install within your instant. You can see we've got things for healthcare, education, recruitment, sales, product and marketing. We've got chat GPT, tools and integration. Now to install one of these scripts is super simple. You basically just click on it and at the top of this script that you find, there's a copy to Blaze little button. Clicking on this will then install it within your instance. Jobs begin. The next extension is called Free Auto Text Expander for Google Chrome. Completely catchy name, I know. Now, the good thing to know about this is it's completely free. There's no secret hidden tiers and it does what it says. Now, the interesting thing to know is this is basically a port of what Magical used to look like about a year ago. Now, as it says in the name, this only works with Google Chrome, so you're not going to get any replacements in a Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, whatever. Now, after you install it, you're going to get a button at the top, and then you're going to get a very basic find and replace menu. So basically, to create a brand new rule, click on the add button. You'll see that you can add in your alias. You can add in the text you want to expand. Click save. That's it. Now, in case you're wondering what other features Auto Text Expander has, I think you could probably tell by the UI that it's very bare bones. Now, if you look at the text box here, you can see it's not even rich text. So all we can do is put in normal strings. Now, a good thing is that you can actually put in long scripts. And most of the time when you click save, it's going to be fine. I have bumped into a few issues here, but in general, you can add in long scripts without a problem. Now, the final other bit of functionality that we can get here is import and export. Now, while Auto Text Expander doesn't have any auto sync, it's not that difficult for you to export your rules and then import them onto another machine. So we have finally got to the best bit. Out of all these tools, which is the one that you should use? So in my opinion, the winner in today's video is Espanso. Now the reason for that is simple. One, it's free. Two, it works on PC, Mac and Linux. Three, it's a desktop tool, meaning you get find and replace everywhere. And finally, it works with large scripts. Now in a perfect world, I would like the sync settings between different environments. However, because it's free, I'm willing to invest the five, 10 minutes of setting up Dropbox on each machine so I don't have to pay anything. Now, if I did have to pay for anything, I would probably pick Blaze because it's the most feature rich tool and it's got all that setting sync done for you. However, pick the tool that makes you happy. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, do not forget to click on the like button right now. Otherwise I'll get you. Also, if you want to see more of my videos, then don't forget to smash on the subscribe button so you don't miss out. And then finally, my final parting gift to you on the screen right now is a link to a video I've created on the five best Chrome extensions for developers. So check that out. I bet you'll find a new extension you didn't know about. And until next Sunday, happy coding.